Good afternoon, Bees fans, and welcome to the Hive London for this afternoon's Vanarama National League fixture as the Bees welcome playoff chasing Notts County. Coming up on our Live from the Hive pre match show, we sit down with 16 year old goalkeeper James Callan after he became the youngest keeper to ever feature in a National League fixture. We take a look back at all of the highlights from Monday's win over Weymouth. And we have a look at a classic encounter between the Bees and the Magpies. There's plenty to come, so sit back, relax, and get in the mood for this afternoon's match. We're heading back to February 2018 for this week's classic encounter. The Bees snatched a late, late winner against Notts County here at the Hive London with a bit of magic from Alex Nichols. Sixteen-year-old goalkeeper James Cannon made National League history last Tuesday night after he came from the bench to become the youngest keeper to feature in the league's history. He also became the youngest goalkeeper ever to play for Barnet. We spoke to him to catch up with him on his experience at Gander Green Lane. James, thanks for joining us on Live from the Hive. What a proud moment that must have been to come on in what was unfortunate circumstances, to, but to make your debut, to become the youngest goalkeeper in National League history, must have been a bit of a whirlwind moment. Yeah, you know, of course it's a sort of proud moment for me. Like I said, it's unfortunate circumstances, obviously a pretty devastating injury to Eamon, but I've talked to him since. You know, we wish him all a speedy recovery, but Football is about opportunities and I was buzzing to come on, show sort of the fans what I'm made of and who I am. And I think I put in a solid performance. I did well on the day. I'm happy with how I, do, how I did. For a goalkeeper to come on in any situation is always tough. But in a situation where your friend's gone off on a stretcher, we're playing against the second best team in the league who were obviously going for promotion. That, doesn't come much bigger than that, and I felt personally you handled the, the occasion brilliantly. You know, the first 10 minutes is always going to be a nervy one, you know, um, but once the first sort of 10, it's just another game, agreed. I've not played a game against six foot four men, but you know, it's for my job and where I play, it's keep the ball out of the net, and at the end of the day, you just do your job, and fingers crossed you get the win, and unfortunately, conceded a goal, but it's what it is. Did it come in sort of better circumstances that it was just before half time that you had the 15 minutes to sort of settle yourself because you knew you were going to then come back out for the second half? 100%. You know, um, you sort of get with the team. And it wasn't, the speed of the game wasn't necessarily a shock to me. You know, I've been training here now for a year. Um, and you get to know the boys and you're good mates with the boys. And you just sort of, after that 10 minutes of just chill, relax, take a breather, 
yeah, it's just another game and it's just another training session where you just sort of with the boys and nothing changes. How helpful were the boys in that break? Did anyone sort of give you a bit of words of wisdom? Yeah, you know, I think I'm in a very privileged position to have so many senior bodies around me. Um, Sarah was just like, you know, don't worry about it. You know, we've got you. you. We'll protect you. Don't worry. And that's always nice to have as a goalkeeper. You always need protection. So that was great. You said you've trained since the summer, of course, and very hotly tipped by the coaches you've had and the other boys. It was almost like they sort of treated you how they would have treated Scott, how would they treated Eamon. From that perspective, that must have been really nice for you that they put the exact same trust in you as they would have Scott, who's obviously had a, a pretty illustrious career. Yeah, you know, um, it's big boots to fill. Mm. You know, Scott's, it's, it's no secret, he's a hell of a keeper. And Eamon's come in and he's done a great job. So it's big boots to fill, but you know, as a goalkeeper, you're always trained just for that one opportunity that you get whether that's off the bench, whether that's starting, whether that's the last minute and you can see the penalty, you know, you always, as a goalkeeper, have got to be ready and you've got to be willing to fight for the shirt and you've got to be willing to do whatever it takes for the team at the end of the day. Talk to me about your career so far. It's not many 16-year-olds <laughs> yeah. who have made a, a senior debut, but just from sort of starting to where we're at now, talk us through that. Um, so, I was scouted by Barnett three years ago. Um, so I've gone through the academy system, played 18s last year. A lot of them probably would have, a lot of the fans might see me in Youth Cup. Um, that's probably my most televised game, if you can call that televised. And then mm, this year, to start of the season, came in to the first team after the unfortunate what happened to the academy, mm -hmm. shut down. And um, ever since then, it's just been training with Lochi, training with Eamon. And then Parksy now, and it's just sort of getting that experience, learning off the senior pros, which is so important for my age. And, you know, just becoming a better player, a better player week on, week out, and just keep learning and learning. And I think that's the best thing for me right now. It must have been almost perfect for you when you've come into the first team and the first choice goalkeeper at the time is Scott, who's played for England, played at a high level, championship football, yeah. that off people to learn from it doesn't get much better at this level I use I used the word earlier privileged you know I'm in a very 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 privileged position at 16 with what's happened with the academies even Sunday league you know no one my age has been playing football and to be even kicking the ball around or catching the ball in my case mm -hmm. um, it's a privilege and I'm absolutely buzzing to be here you know it's just it's a great experience for me and it's a great way hopefully for a long career I was going to say that I was going to be my next question <laughs> for longer term what's the aim I assume is to cement a place as, as number one I know it's early days but that must be you know, the ambition um, in football you know we're all competitors no matter how old you know I'm the type of kid uh, Christmas Monopoly game against your family is the World Cup final <laughs> so um, I want I want to cement that place and obviously you want the you talk about end goals and you talk about oh I want to be Premier League you want to be but you know there's small goals in there as well you know it's fighting for you fighting for the shirt and it's about doing your time and I'm absolutely buzzing to show the Bees fans what I'm made of and give them that give them the James Cannon <laughs> give them the James Cannon feel so um, I'm absolutely buzzing to show the fans what I've got hopefully in the near future the messages you received on social media was countless. Your phone must have sort of blown <laughs> up in the 45 minutes that you were, that you had been playing against Sutton. Yeah. It must have been nice to receive so many messages yeah. from, from the boys and, and, of course, from the Barnet fans. Yeah, it was. It was very sort of, like I said, proud. It was a proud moment. But it'd be naive to, for me to say that that's the, that's the big thing now, you know. That's just a little step in, at the end of the day. And we move on from that. You know, you've had your fun, you've had your laugh about it and now it's the bigger picture what is it next what is it next because you know football is all about the next step there's no I, I don't see an end goal it's just little next step next step next step and how to progress as a player so of course that was great to receive in social media and everything from the boys but you know new kids come in you know you've got to fight, fight for your place at the end of the day the Bees headed to Weymouth on Bank Holiday Monday looking for a response from last Saturday's defeat to Dagenham and Redbridge they delivered with a 2-0 win against the Terrors and let's take a look at how all the action unfolded. It's Cameron Murray who's put up the signal. Dangerous moment this. 
for Barnet. Murray runs over the ball. Here comes the kick into the box. McCoy's going to try and keep it alive. The flag goes up, and that's going to be offside. But a nice bit of invention from the free kick. Slightly disappointing, though, John. Throw in here to be taken by McQueen. Midway inside the Weymouth half. That on the left-hand side. Well dealt with there by Mason Clark. And he's got two Weymouth players around him, and he escapes them and finds McQueen. And there's a strike from Wordsworth, and it's blocked, but it's going to come out towards the edge of the box. He's looking for Angle to find a shot there, Skeffington, but he couldn't. Plays it out towards the right-hand side in the box. Cleared by Mensah, and it's going to drop to a white shirt. Is it in the field? Suspicious of a foul against Dallas. Slightly harsh one. I think they both jumped together, but Skeffington was judged to have been fouled by Dallas. It's going to be a foul for a kick. A couple of new additions. I'm not sure if the communication's on point, or just a little bit sluggish. Um, as the ball was cleared there and following it out and pushing the midfield on. So it's something we need to be aware of. I think a lot could be McQueen's got this free kick. We'll just watch how this plans out as he's about to take it the ball rolled and now I have to replace it. Do you think the match scheduling plays a part in that? As the ball goes in, we'll just watch this free kick. Headed back into the box, stabbed clear by half. It. Dallas can't get underneath it. It's going to drop straight back to McQueen and he's going to have a chance to pop it back into the danger area, which he does down the right-hand side. Very well kept alive, good head tennis there between the two and Taylor managed to get it back to the right hand side, it comes back to Taylor, into Wordsworth at the corner of the box, he's got a lot of room and he dinks it up towards the edge of the box, McQueen's going to try and keep it alive and he does really well McQueen to keep that in play, he's up against Dixon, it's a good ball across the six yard box, the vital header there to nip away from goal and it comes back out again there's a strike from distance and even Ross has to make a save and Weymouth living dangerously, Barnett still in possession, this is a good sustained period for the Londoners. It's hooked back forward again, this time by Richards Everton. It's half dealt with, and then Weymouth do manage to clear their lines, but a couple of dicey moments there, Joel Muldoff. Yeah, definitely. They've, um, they're just getting the ball in wide positions, aren't they? Nothing too fancy about it, and just trying to get it in. Goalkeeper Parks finds Adeloyne. He lays it off to Mason Clark. A lovely touch. Mason Clark has options both right and left. He's going to go alone. He's going to have a shot straight down at Ethan Ross's throat in the centre of the goal. But Ethan Ross not happy with the defending there from, I think, Ngarlo is, is the man who was being told off by Ethan Ross. The Lincoln Loney is out of his area and he clears it long. Too long. That's over everybody and straight into his opposite number, Adam Parks. Penalty area is just going to come out and gather that up. Yeah, I know it's difficult on a windy day, but you're banging the ball up there to uh, Dallas. And I think um, Richards Everton must be best pot a 6-2. Um, you, you know, should be really putting it on an angle, at least trying to put it to the left or right side to put the fullbacks under pressure yeah. rather than down the centre half. Mason, net. Mason Clark did really well there, and he gets the ball back after a 1-2. He's into the box, onto his left foot, straight at the... It was a really good effort, even Ross's near post, and the reactions there from the Lincoln Loney was superb. It's a corner to Barnett. Yeah, Mason Clark, he looks lively, doesn't he, when he's on the ball. Gets the ball at his feet, and he's happy to run at people left, right. Good effort, um, but equal to it. Ethan Ross, great save. Wordsworth's going to take this kick then across in swinging, left footed, oh, just didn't quite come to a white shirt but it does come to the edge of the box and the strike comes in, it's tapped in inside the six yard box, it's Richard Everton with a goal, suspicions of offside but the flag stays down and the visitors have broken the deadlock, Weymouth nil, Barnet one. Yeah, there's been a few little warning signs, hasn't there? I wouldn't say they've been dominant in any way, but um, it's just a, a ball in a danger area that's become scrappy and they've responded better. So, um, yeah, hopefully Weymouth can look at that and, you know, um, get some fire in their belly because, you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't be losing. Comes back to McCarthy, launching over the top, looking for... Oh, Brooks is in the, oh, in the area and it's on his left foot and he hits it first time. And he gets his finish all wrong. It was Richards Everton who just he touched the ball back right into the path of Calvin Brooks and his eyes must have lit up. McCarthy to Brooks. Brooks turns it first time around the corner. The spin of the ball takes it into the path of Dixon. And he does well to get it into the box. And Dallas, he spins, he gets a shot away. It's not going to drop to McCoy. It's cleared. And Garlo trying to keep it alive. Dallas again in the box. He goes down at the edge of the box and lit far too easily really there. Dallas, he was using his strength. No suspicion of a foul for me. That's a foul by McCarthy. And now right-footed towards the edge of the 18-yard box. Well won by Mentor, and it comes under Vaughan, who tries a very ambitious shot from distance. Good technique, but the shot itself, unfortunately, from a Barnet point of view, went way, way, way wide of Ethan Ross's goal. 
a bit of contact off the ball, but Andy looks tired. I must admit, whether it's mentally or physically, but he, he hasn't got the sort of urgency and spark he's had in the last sort of few games. And there is the halftime whistle as Weymouth were trying to get through to uh, equalise before half time, but it wasn't to be. Towards the feet of Dallas. Dallas, heavy touch, couldn't get away from Skeffington. And now that's a good ball in, and he's going to be one on one with the keeper here, Adeloy. He gets a shot away, and he just rushed his finish, and he, he had more room than he thought he did there. And it goes straight across Ethan Ross, who was more than equal to it. And now that ball's gone straight out of play from the goalkeeper. If they're looking to respond there with Dallas, he lays it off to McCoy. Dallas gets away from him, and now he's got some room on the left hand side if he can keep it in play, which he can. He's one on one with Vaughan. He tries to go to the byline, he's still in the box, he's still got the ball, Andy Dallas, he's still going, and he just couldn't dig a cross out, and he boots the goalkeeper's bottle in frustration behind the goal, but better from Weymouth, who have managed to get in down the left-hand side, but opportunity... Who's lie, you know, been lively in recent weeks around the box, anything could happen. Ben Warman does very well in midfield to find Dallas. Dallas. And that was a challenge, Andy Dallas did very well. The challenge that came in there, two feet were off the ground. He did make contact with the ball and there didn't seem to be contact with the player. John, what are you thinking here? I think he could be lucky to stay on the pitch, if I'm being honest. Well, the referee has given himself a minute or so to yeah. think and it's a straight red card. And the challenge was reckless. There was no contact with the Weymouth player, it has to be said. But it was a dangerous challenge to come in from the, the Barnet lad the game out to Harfield again in towards the feet of McCoy who's had to come back good good shape from Barnet it has to be said Skeffington there and that's this occasion coming out to challenge McCoy he's been worked out to camp on the right hand side though McCoy just breaking into the box on the left hand side as yet unseen by Vaughan heavy ball back to Dixon but it's gone to McCarthy McCarthy's going to try a strike it bounces off the back of a Barnet player and it goes out or it stays in play actually and then it bounces off the back of Kelvin Brooks and out for a goal kick. It's away Sean Shield, he's very eager to get back into the action. Harfield, in towards Shields. Shields spots the runner Cameron Murray and it's gone all the way through to Brooks, he gets his head to the ball, what a save from the goalkeeper there. Oh, Kelvin Brooks. Now he's given a foul against Brooks, he's allowed the advantage because the goalkeeper has the, his ball in the hands. But Kelvin Brooks gets in there and all he could do with it was nod it goalwards. But Adam Parks stands strong, sticks a hand out and makes a tremendous side to keep the score at nil one, John. Yeah, good save by a young man, wasn't it? Nice reaction, bottom left, but that just shows the reaction that Sean Shields brings to a game. You know, um, he's got that bit of quality, hasn't he? can show that little bit of class, him and sort of Ollie Harfield. And here it comes, right-footed, very deep, and Ethan Ross just has to help that over his crossbar held up in the wind and it could have caused problems but the Lincoln Loney watched it all the way. It's another one that's going to swing in towards the near post. Harfield's there to head it clear though. It's going to go straight back out though. And there is the second delivery and it's a good one in towards the near post and that again was looking to catch Ethan Ross out but he was equal to it. Back they have a reform. Launched over the top towards Harry Taylor, the man I mistakenly thought was sent off earlier. Pulls it back, and the first time strike from Adeloy at the edge of the box goes over the bar. But again, wait, Barnet, they've just soaked up the pressure in the past few minutes, and they're starting to look a little bit better, aren't they, John? Easily deal with that, and does. Out towards Mason Clark, good first touch. Brooks goes to put pressure on him. Infield to Skeffington, now well turned around the corner by the, the main striker, Adeloy, out towards Mason Clark again. Adeloy's going to make a run ahead of him. Mason Clark steps in between two Weymouth players, though gets to the edge of the box and he finds Taylor oh, and then Taylor looking for the run of Skeffington but it was well cut out. Cafeles picks it up in midfield. Out to Vaughan. McCoy goes to meet him. Vaughan plays the ball down the line. Harfield's going to try and let that go out. It's not going to drop though. Taylor does well to keep it in play but Harfield recovers and finds Dallas. Send her away. Yeah, that's where he wants to stand. And it's a disappointment in the end. Harfield tries to deliver the ball in towards the back post. He puts too much on it, and that was disappointing to say the least. Mensa. Harfield. Not too many, too much in the way of options. Find Shields though. Shields cuts in field. A ball that he's slightly scuffed. It's dealt with by Nugent up in the air, and I think that's going to go out for a corner. There's the example of the win that went up in the air, and nobody knew where that was going to drop, John. And yeah, it was awful. Point. No one knew where that was going, did they? And Weymouth have this corner then from the left-hand side, desperate to find an equaliser. Barnet, understandably, down to 10 men have left nobody forward. Shields goes across to the left-hand side to take this corner. 
Ethan Ross is dead on halfway at the moment. Here it comes. It's going to swing in towards the near post over everybody's head. It's bouncing around the six-yard box, stabbed clear. Harfield with a really poor header and it's left Barnett here one-on-one -on -one as Adeloy goes one-on-one -on -one with Ethan Ross. He's even got support on the left-hand side, but he puts it through Ethan Ross's legs and into the back of the net. Ollie Harfield kicks the ball in frustration and there's the danger of the win. The poor header from Harfield as he lost the flight of the ball and 10 men Barnett double their lead. Weymouth nil, Barnett two. Yeah, there's not a lot to say there, I think. Individual error, unfortunately, by Ollie. The ball swirling round in the air, tries to header it, but, you know, gets his body under it, sends it in the wrong direction. But you got to give credit to the finish. It was clinical, wasn't it? I think you have to give credit to Barnett's performance. Ever since the send, uh, all throughout the afternoon, but since the sending off, they've been compact, they've restricted any space, and they've looked to hit Weymouth from the counter attack, which is exactly how they've just got their second goal. And I think he's told Brennan Camp exactly what he thinks of that ball. And another loose ball, this time from Harfield in midfield, gives the ball back to Barnett. McCarthy can't make a challenge, Camp can't make a challenge, he's still going, he gets a strike away and it's only just wide, that's a wonderful, wonderful run from Efron Mason-Clark. We're going to take it quick, they have McCoy straight into Shield, Shield's at the byline, he decides to pull back to Harfield, he digs it out and he floats it in towards the back post and there is Calvin Brooks and he's put it wide and that sums up Weymouth's afternoon. And their positional play has just been phenomenal. They're just gobbling it up. So you you got to get down the sides of people or break them down. And the referee takes a look at his watch and decides to bring proceedings to a close. That's all we have time for on this week's Live from the Hive pre-match show. It's now time to head into the action as the Bees take on the Magpies. I'll hand you over to our commentary team of Aaron Pullen and myself, Adam Rowe. <laughs>